No, it's not. We just yeah. Up. I think that's pretty close. Yeah. I mean, the the reality is you're probably not going to be perfect here, okay? Because data isn't perfect, right? Real world data, it's messy, it's sloppy. We ha we get things called outliers that we have to account for in it. And it, and it changes things sometimes. I mean, you want to believe that this girl that's on the swing going back and forth, she's going to reach the exact same, you know, horizontal displacement every single time. But when you account for going faster and faster or kicking further back, you know, and this is, this is real data. So when you look at this and you're trying to put something together, you're not going to be perfect, okay? So that's why I said, you know, there's, there's ways of looking at this where we can kind of fudge some numbers and get close enough, all right? But I want to focus on the real, um, the method behind this. First of all, maybe not first of all, we'll go, we'll go through as much as we possibly can. Um, when you graph this, when you graph these points, if you look at what that graph looks like, okay, you get something akin to this. Yeah. Okay. That's not perfect, but that's probably that's probably actually not good at all the way that I drew that. So I'm gonna try that one again. Because you can't have we've gotta see this. Something like that, more or less. Now, neither one of our graphs that we've talked about cosine or sine look like that. So obviously there's some kind of transformation, all right? Now, I'm, I'm gonna erase this because I wanna try to do this without the graph. And that's just adding another element to this, adding another challenge. Um, when you talk about amplitude, when you talk about period length, when you talk about vertical shift or equilibrium, you can identify all of those values just from the table. Because we've talked, amplitude is half the distance from the max to the min not that hard to figure out what the minimum value is in this graph, or excuse me, in this table. Just look for the smallest value, the lowest value over here. Negative 65, oh, negative 65.8, right, can you come with me? There we go. Negative 65.8. It's like, it's like the smart board knows when the camera's on. It's like it's playing a practical joke on me when I try to do something up here. It just makes me very upset. So we know what our minimum value is. You can look for the maximum value and what's been given. The maximum value is over here, 65.6. So we've got our max and we've got our min. Right? And those two values are incredibly important to us, okay? Because they tell us how far apart this graph is vertically, which is gonna help us identify, did I shift it all right, and did I stretch it? Those are two of the transformations that we've talked about, amplitude and vertical shift, okay? Knowing these points is crucial. So we can identify, I think we can identify the amplitude right now. The amplitude is half of the distance from the maximum point to the minimum point. All right? And what do we get for that? 65.7? Okay. Is that right? 65.7? Or no. No, that's not right. Is it? Yes, 65.7? Okay. So we have our amplitude. 65.7. Now, you may have used 65.0 and 65.0, and that's why I said you could kind of fudge this a little bit, right? An eighth, an eighth of an inch difference, when really it'd be a little bit more symmetric if we were just going from negative 65 and back to negative 65. But we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, so we have our amplitude, done, all right? We can identify our vertical shift based on these values. The vertical shift, we said, is that equilibrium value, that, that soft middle, that point that is the same distance away from the max as it is from the min. Now, let's talk about how we might be able to do that from the table, okay? When you look at this, you go to the highest height of 65.6, you go to the lowest low of negative 65.8, where is that soft middle point? When you look at these values, 65 going down, okay, we're going down to here, 
We're, we get to negative 8.5, negative 38, so somewhere in between 33 and negative 33, negative 0.8, 56.9, it's somewhere in the middle, okay? Somewhere in, in between where I hit this point and this point, there's got to be that middle value, right? Maybe it's more easily identifiable if you noticed from the beginning, sorry, this is at negative 65, the height is at 65.6, so from here to here, I think it's a little bit easier to see where that soft middle might be, right? We're getting really close to zero, is what I'm getting at. But if we want to do it with just the numbers, we take half of, or we average the max and the min. 65.6 plus negative 65.8. When you average those, I think you get negative 0 0.1. Yes. Okay, so there's your D value. Again, I mean, what, is, what are we saying? We're saying that negative 0.1 inches is the equilibrium value. Put yourself in the context of this problem, people. Okay, it's a girl on a swing. We're measuring horizontal displacement negatively and positively. What's equilibrium? The swing straight up and down. Mm -hmm. So when I say you can kind of fudge things, what is D really? What is the equilibrium value when her horizontal displacement is zero? Not negative 0 0.1 inches. Okay, but again, it's not a perfect, it's not a perfect science when we're dealing with data such as this. So we know A and we know D. Now finding the period is a little bit is a little bit more difficult, right? What's the period length? Period length is the interval, in this case I can even say the interval of time that it takes to repeat the behavior, right? For it to repeat all of its outputs. So if we start this experiment at zero, when this girl on the swing is negative 65 inches away, backwards, and then she's swinging forwards, and then she's getting to her height of 65.6, and then she's swinging back to negative 65 or negative 65.8, how long did that take? You could have used three or you could have used 3.2 seconds, right? So again, when you look at the numbers, it's not like, well, there's a negative 63 and a negative 63, I don't find another one. Oh, what am I doing? No, put yourself in this scenario, think about it. Think about this, 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 the context of this question. If she starts at a maximum displacement, when does she get back to that value? Now, not to the max, but back to that value, that negative value of 65, it's what, three or 3.2. You could have used either of those. So now we've identified without the graph, we've identified that the period you can use 3, you can use 3.2, it's really not going to matter, but the period is 2 pi over b, replace what we know now as the period length, we could say 3.2, I think that's what most people were doing. So we have a b value with the old switcheroo, we have the b value of 2 pi over 3.2, and we can use that. Now here's the problem, which I think a lot of you notice. Okay. So I've identified A, D, and B. When I go to write my cosine function, Y equals, uh, sorry, it was what, 65.7? 65.7 cosine of 2 pi over 3.2 X. And then we can say uh, minus 0 0.1, that was our value of D. I don't think we need that. I think we identified you don't really have a vertical shift. Okay, you know, equilibrium is straight up and down. But when you graph this, right, I don't have, I won't put Desmos up, but when you graph that, you get this. But that's not what the data is doing. The data starts at a minimum and does this, right? So what's the difference? What's the reflection? It's a reflection. We haven't talked about that. We haven't talked about, we, we've talked about reflections as transformations. We haven't talked about it specifically here. Amplitude is an absolute value, okay? But we can make that value negative to reflect our graph. So instead of going as a normal cosine wave would go from max to min 
back to its max, this specific case started at a min, went to its max, back to its min. So I have to reflect the entire graph vertically, and since it's reflected vertically, I have to take the opposite of that leading coefficient. Okay.